when Peter tells him, it's easy to be a soul winner. Let's continue. I'm tying it and moving on. Verse 45. Philip, ha, the letters that came to the kingdom, his name is Philip. What does he do? Read with me. And Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, we have found him whom Moses in the law and in the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Continue. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come. Our work is very easy. Just to tell them, What is your easy work? Come. To be a soul winner, to bring people, to fill the church, to exit people from hell and populate heaven. It is that easy. And then the Bible says, verse 47, now Nathaniel coming toward Jesus and said to him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile or deceit. And Nathaniel said to him, How did you know me? How do you know me? Jesus answered and said, Before Philip, before Philip called you, because it's Philip who called him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel answered and said, Rabbi. You are a son. You are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said I saw you under the fig tree, you believe you will see greater things than this. 51. And he said to him, Most assured I say to you, Thereafter you shall see heaven open and angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. Let me speak this and then we move on. The kingdom of God has made you a battle axe. You are a weapon of God that will change destinies. They are going to hell as soon as they interact with you. Did you lift up your hand and you say, Lord, use me? God will change young men. Young men like you they will not go to hell. They will see the kingdom of God. Women that you work with, your brothers, your sisters are among the territories that God has already assigned you a prophet. You've got your circles that God has called you to influence. You have them. If they go to hell, their blood will be required of you. No, amen. Let me say, help you. Amen. This is Jesus. And the Bible says to him, you know, you would think that Jesus would sweep the whole earth and save it. But God will not do anything without using you, his prophet. God has got a lot of trust in you. When he saved you, you see, when they were leaving Egypt, he said through Moses, let my people go that they may serve me. You were called to serve. Not to sit in the church. When you find yourself without a fruit, you should wake up and repent. When you find yourself in church and you are not serving, you should wake up and repent. One of the greatest ministry you will do in serving God is to win souls. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. I'm saying, kitu kimoja utasaidia kabisa ama utafanya kwa ufalme na nchaulitiwa ni kujiunga na Kristo kuvuna nafsi. Alikuja kwa jiri ya kio. That's why Jesus died. When John is closing up his ministry, his two disciples, one of them is not named, but I'll tell you who he is. But the Bible says one of the disciples or followers of John that had a, a John introduced the ministry of Jesus and ran to him, his name is Andrew. And Andrew followed Jesus and said, a, 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 the, he said to Jesus together with the other disciples, Rabbi, show us where you stay. Some of them pulled them to the next 
ministry. The ministry of John was folding up because the ministry of John was supposed to introduce the ministry of Jesus. Hallelujah. He was supposed to make a way for the ministry of King Jesus. So when he was folding up his ministry, some of his disciples had to move on. One of them is Andrew. The other one that is not named is the one who has written that book. He never calls his name out. So it was John. So Andrew and John, they leave the ministry of John the Baptist and they follow the ministry of Jesus. They come and they abide with Jesus. Because the Bible says, John said to them, this is a lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. They came and joined him to join the mission of saving the world. The reason why we join Jesus is to join him in the ministry of saving the world. They abode with Jesus. One night is enough. One service is enough to turn you around to wake up to your mission. They abode with Jesus one night. This service is enough. Yeah. To whosoever has got ears, let them hear. Whoever is going to change, let them change. Yeah. Don't wait for another service. By next service, you must bear fruit. Yeah. It will be sweet to see people in heaven that would have, would have been branded to go to hell. The devil called them harlots like Rahab. But God tells them, calls them a new name. They are not drunkards. They are drum players. Don't brand them what the devil calls them. Do your mission. And I told you, they are in your circles. You have got your circles of influence. Those circles from today. Know that the blood of those people are required of you. Your workmates. Your relatives. I'm not telling you to go and hold a crusade if you have not been graced to do that. But every one of us has got their circles. Andrew, they stay with Jesus one night. The following morning, Andrew is full of passion. To minister, you must have passion. You must desire to see the world coming to Jesus. You must look at the harvest and know that they are supposed not to go to hell. Imagine people that Jesus died for going to hell just because we never preached to them. Andrew wakes up and goes to his brother not knowing that he will bring the pillar of the church. Some of the people that you look at and they look, you know, you look at the character of Peter. He was just that kind of brother that you see. Like the brother I've just told you. And I can't it because Simon means a lead. A lead can be blown just anyhow. You look at people, you don't know the potential they're having. That's why Jesus tells them, Come and I will change you. I'll make you. Some of the people we ignore, you don't have an idea the potential they carry when they come and they are changed by God. Be they drunkards, bring them. Be they whatever the world calls them, bring them. Don't say this is my relative. You don't have an idea they are. When they come to the kingdom, they cease being your brother. They become kingdom acts. God anoints them. And the blood of your father and mother ceases from there. They get the blood of Jesus. Simon came to Jesus through Andrew, his brother. Your relatives are in your hands. Don't tell me you don't know who to witness to. Those people you sleep with in the same house. Those you are cousins. You go with them, Chama, you do those. That's not your job. Do your job. Oh, we have got a WhatsApp group for cousins. You are there for a kingdom assignment. Everybody is there for their assignment. 
Some of them in that group have got a different assignment. If you don't watch out, they'll take more of your cousins to hell. But you are wise in your circles of family. Like Andrew, go for souls. Tell them to come to church. If you are unable to preach to them, don't worry. Just tell them, come and see. Even if there is nothing more to see, there are some beautiful gold things here. Just come and see. Come and see my pastor. Come and see my church. I'm telling you, some of them you don't have to preach them eh, eh, the whole of the Madusela thing. You just need to tell them, come and see. When they come, leave them to Jesus. Or some of the people who say, a prophet has got no honor in his own town. But I'm telling you, there is grace. When you determine to win people to the kingdom, there is grace. The Holy Ghost comes and pulls them to Christ. When Andrew came with his brother, I say this again, he never knew that his brother would be even greater than him in the kingdom. He never knew that God would turn Peter from Simon, make him a rock or a stone. You can imagine you bringing a sister or a brother two years to come when I'm not around, you find them preaching the gospel from this podium. Being more on fire than your pastor. It's possible. Don't hinder them. From today, change. Lift up your hand again and say, Lord, use me. You just dare do what Indra did. You will be shocked. The next big worship leader, it's you who is having them. It's you who is having them. Our guitar player is coming through you. Ministries will be born. When they come, they will be filled with the Holy Ghost. They will change. The next day, you have seen that what happens after Simon comes with his brother. Then they take Jesus to their village of Galilee. I believe they say to them, Lord, to Kona Bish Temwingine. Because Philip was not their relative. But these are areas of your influence. People you know. You know people. Those people that you know, God has entrusted them to you. Don't just feel nice being with them. Don't just call them my workmates. Invite them to the kingdom of God. I'll wait until you say amen now. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Let everybody know, number one, you are saved. Somebody say, I'm totally saved. Because when you are saved, you don't get ashamed of the gospel. Very soon, we are on our way to heaven. Actually, I was reading Daniel chapter 12. It shocked me. Because we are in those evil days. Give me Daniel 12 from verse 1. And then I go back to where I am. Daniel 12 from verse 1. If you can. Daniel 12 verse 1. The Bible says at that time, the uh, time Michael shall stand up. This is a great prince who stands watch o- over the sons of your people and shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to this to that time. That is this time, and at that time, the people shall be delivered. The rapture will take place. Everyone who is who is found written in the book of life or in the book. Continue. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. That's the final judgment. Some to everlasting life and some to shame everlasting contempt. Continue verse 3. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament that the stars and those who turn many to righteousness like stars forever and ever. Look at me, everybody. That is where we are right now. We are in the last rap when the devil is 
releasing the final pain in the world. Keep your eyes on me. Let me tell you this truth. We have seen the corona wave. It's just a beginning. I'm not wishing bad things because I can assure you the Lord will be with you until the end of time. Whatever will happen to the world, I believe God will protect you. Because he did that in the days of Noah. When he was bringing judgment, he saved Noah and the righteous in his house. He did that in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. He saved the righteous men, root according to the book of Peter. He saved him. He never judged him with the world. But in the world, there will be a lot of pain. They've just begun. But the Bible says in verse number two, take me back. Back number two. Many of those who sleep, number one, number one, sorry, faster, number one, so that I can go back to where I am. That angel Michael, such a people, such as never was, there will be trouble, such as never was in any nation, uh, even to this time. We have begun, I can tell you confidently, we have begun the final rap. Don't live as if you are here forever. Jude verse 23 says, Sahi, nyakuwa wengine toka kwa moto. Jude verse 23. He says, eh, wengine tutawa nyakuwa. We are just about to get the final harvest. Rapture. Take away whosoever you can now. We are not far from the trumpet sounding. We are not far. Don't be deceived. Is you're praying for your mansion, is you're praying for your seven children, oh God, give me 21 children, oh God, give me this, God, give me that. Pray knowing that you are not here forever. No problem to occupy until he comes, but keep your focus on his coming. Not on what you're just about to occupy. Because I have told you, most of those things that you see now, you will leave them very soon. And go and be given crowns. There are five crowns in heaven. Hallelujah. Shine like a star. I say shine like a star. Be wise. I say be wise. So Andrew and Peter, they take Jesus to Philip. And Jesus calls out Philip. It is you who is going to take Jesus to your places of influence. Whoever you know, introduce them to Jesus. Wash your hands of their blood. If you preach to them and they don't get saved, you are free. If you don't preach to them, their blood is required. I rebuke fear out of you. In the name of Jesus, don't ever fear again to look people eyeball to eyeball and ask them, are you saved? Or are you just about to get saved? Because I told you the harvest is ripe. Most of them are just about to get saved. They brought Philip. And Philip, when he had this, he went out fishing also. He went and found a man called who? Nathaniel. Everybody say Nathaniel. How did Nathaniel? You know, you know who Nathaniel is? He's also called Bartholomew. He's also called a son of encouragement. You remember the guy who encouraged Phil, uh, Paul when he gave his life to Jesus, walked with him, discipled him. He came to the kingdom through another person. It is you who is going to bring people who are going to change and shift the kingdom. Your mission might be very important from today if you obey. Can I remind you? We are in that season of expansion of the kingdom. The prophetic word is telling us we are expanding. We will never be the same again. Papa spoke to us the other Sunday and gave us two key words to expansion. Number one. Okay. Number one. 
Which did you like most? The were two. Humility. Because ukiondoa kiburi maisha ni mwako, umefaulu na mungu. So some, someone say number one, humility. Number two, obedience. I pray that these two words will stick in you. Humble yourself before God and obey the Lord's commands. Whatever he says to us, just do it. We will expand to the right and to the left. We are bringing back our tents. Why? This place is too small. Can you imagine Jesus with 12 disciples only and just by them beginning to obey and bringing people to the kingdom. The whole world today has had the gospel. 12 people. We are more than 12. I say we are more than 12. If we obey right now and you say that's not pastor speaking. God has called me right now. To be a soul winner, you will never come without three believers here. You will see people you brought and you never knew what God could do with them. They will change the world. Somebody say, I obey pastor. You are not just obeying pastor, you are obeying the Lord himself. I say, you are obeying the Lord himself. Bring some young men, they will play keyboard and sing in this place. You will be shocked at what they will do. They will influence even you to serve God more. You look at them filled of the Holy Ghost and you wonder, are they my fruits? The Bible says in John 15 verse number 1. John 15 verse number 1. I am the vine. And you are the branches. Every branch. Come on, come on, come on. Take it. John 15 verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is a vine dresser. Keep moving. Every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bear much fruit, more fruit. You already are clean because of what? Because of what? What has made you clean? You are already cl clean because of the word. Keep moving. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Let's go. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. And without me you can do nothing. He that abides in me. Oh my Jesus. I won't talk about that. Keep moving. If anyone does not abide in me, abide. He is cast out as a branch that is withered. And what happens? Everybody read that next story, next statement. And they and do what with them? Where? Where? Where do they the, the fruitless branches end up in? And who takes them there? They, whoever they are, I'll show you. And they gather them and throw them into the fire. And they are burned. Jesus is talking to his disciples. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And it shall be done for you. Ah, verse 8. By this, my father is glorified. When is father glorified? When you bear much fruit and you be my disciples. That's how you qualify to be a disciple of Christ. Jesus says, I am the vine and my father is working for us. And you are my branches. That's how we relate with Jesus. And he says, every branch that bears no fruit. Verse 2. Move with me. Verse 2 again. Let's go verse 2. Every branch that bears no fruit, it is taken away. Every branch that bears fruit, he takes care of it. 
God expects us, expects us to be fruitful. Don't be lied to by anything else. We are not here to prosper by buying cars. We are here to serve Jesus of truth. He will bless us when we, 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 we serve him. He says in that verse, verse number six, he says he will answer your prayers. But he says, if you be in church, know he is the vine and you are a branch. What are you? And he says, abide in me. You must stay strong in the kingdom of God. Don't be that those people who come to services, they are hot to serving God. Those people who want just to come one service, Sunday only, two hours, disappear. They are not abiding. They are just hanging there. Be strong in the Lord. Come on church. Don't love him half-heartedly. Love him with everything you have. With your time. With your money. Love him with your whole spirit. Abide strongly. So that he can feed you. He can feed you. The vine dress our father is feeding the vine. He wants you to be strong in the Lord. And when you are there. Being taken care of by the father. You become a branch that bears fruit. God wants you to bear fruit. Don't stay in the church without seeing your disciples. Hey, hey, lazima miaka mwili kisha kama Yesu atachelewa. Nasioni. Ono na kichelewa sama. Are you seeing him taking forever? He's just about. Hallelujah. Sooner. Sooner than we expected. Sooner than we first believed. You must see your disciples. You must bear fruit. Listen. Because I believe in the word. And that's why I'm a preacher. Every branch that bears no fruit, he cuts it. God is not desperate. If you don't want to serve him, he'll cut you. I don't want... Hey. One time this verse was preached and I repented with all, everything within me. Jesus doesn't necessarily have to have you. Somebody can get saved and replace you. Did you know that? If I refuse to preach today, the gospel will be preached here. And I tell you the truth. My car broke down so I don't have it today. Come and get up and repair the yangu. Kungekuwa sahi gospel fire. Ha. Ha. Peter died and the gospel is being preached. Apostle Paul is not there. But the gospel is being preached. Jeremiah is not there. But the prophecies are still being spoken today. Don't allow God to replace you. When Moses died, the Lord appeared to Joshua and said to Joshua, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. It's you now. The gospel can never stop because of our preacher. Ha! It can never stop. Your prayer is to humble yourself and say, Lord, I pray that you make me more fruitful. Desire. Did you see what Peter says in the book of Acts chapter number one? He says, talking about Judas, he says, let his place be taken by another. He has gone to his place. What was his place? Hell. I'm sorry to say that. I'm not a judge, but that's what's written about Judas. He says, yes, you see, when you are unfruitful, the Bible says the branch that is, is that's unfruitful is cut. Well, the branch that bears fruit is pruned. Unaondolewa magonjo. Unaondolewa vitu vina kusumbua. Vitu vingine hauta umbea kama utakuwa fruitful. Hauta umbea magal. You see that? It's there I think in verse 6. Vitu vingine unaombea ni kwa maana. Hauna. What are you doing in the kingdom? Some of you have been in these things that you call networking. Do what, what, what? Multi-level marketing. And you are quick to go and bring people to. But in the kingdom, you are fruitless. Have you seen people who are doing multi-level marketing? Nobody's talking to me today. 
I love you more than you think. When you go to heaven and see your fruit, you will love me then. Right now, listen and obey. There are people who, when they wake up on Monday, their diary is full with assignment. But the diary of the kingdom, empty. Can you imagine? Can I tell you the truth? You are in the earth for mission, not for business. Iyo tunayendaka kufanya ni kibarua kupatia mkate na mungu ibariki. Nasema na mungu ibariki. Lakini sisi duniani tuko hapo kutumikia mungu. Na ungea kuhusu wewe na mimi. Whatever you do, fill up also. The way you fill up a, a diary for the whole year. My ear plan. My ear planner. I'll open seven branches. Get a other, the other diary for your mission on earth because you are a soul winner and say by seven months I want 20 souls I want to open a, I want to build a church by myself not just to open a branch I'll believe in God for 6 million for 4 million to build a church by myself like a Muslim yes church don't just show God a diary that you have filled up with business plans. Show also a diary that you are planning to be fruitful. When you are praying for this, pray for this also. And I'm telling you, according to this verse, hey, anyone does not abide in me is cast away. What I hate most in this verse, they, who is these people they call they? These are the people who make you unfruitful. Those guys, because when we don't see you in church, you are with some guy somewhere. You know those guys in Java? Kafseria, you know those guys who you sit with? They are always talking coffee, 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 coffee. How come they invite you to coffee and you never invite them to church? Is that not a reversed priority? And a reversed order of life? How can you work with people in school, in companies? In, you have never brought anybody to church, but they have brought you even to their grandmother. They will take you to their grandmother. Do ah Jamani, we can hear to kona he na wana kubeba hivi. Ah wata kubeba no na vile wata kubeba mbaka motoni. Sija andi kava six. I'm just reading it also. As you are reading it, are you reading it somewhere? They they are called they. They will they anoint you. They keep the anointing you. Bring them to the kingdom of God. They call you for this game. They tell you for man you. They tell you. They have made you even to know all oh, the footballers. But you have not made them know the 12 disciples of Jesus. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I repent on your behalf. Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God first and its righteousness and all the other things shall be added. When you make the kingdom number one, I assure you, you will never struggle in this world. Never. You will never struggle with hospital bills. Never. They will be paid for you. Because you will never be there. Your children will never struggle looking for jobs. Jobs will get them. Because he will make you more fruitful. The time you would have spent going around company after company, it will be reduced. Why? God wants you more fruitful. Avoid they. Avoid those guys. They are called they. They gather them and they carry them and they throw them in the fire and they are burned. This day is a beautiful day. It's our day of declaring we are a mission church. We are a mission church. People will go to heaven just because we obeyed the Lord. 
people's destinies in life, families that would have divorced and been messed up, will be changed just because you spoke to that man. Just because you, you see, Jesus said, whatever house you enter, you look where we began. Declare peace. We are carrying something that is going to change and transform the world. People who would have died of AIDS, they will not because you reach them out just on time. Are you seeing yourself? Are you seeing yourself? Such as important tool in the kingdom of God. Don't allow the devil to make you useless. The Bible says that don't, anybody that is sluggish in the kingdom of God is the brother to the destroyer. That is Proverbs also. Ukitaka kusaidia shetani kuwa mzembe katika kazi ya ufalme. Una msaidia shetani. Aki kuangalia hivi anakuogopa. The devil fears you. Because you are lethal. You are dangerous. You can snatch all hell out. So he wants you to be to look okay. Don't be okay. Tell people to come to church. Today, I declare we are a mission church. I say I declare we are a mission church. We are not existing here just to be nice. Every Sunday you come, you carry 10 flyers. How many? And you don't come back with them? And you don't just dish them out to lose them? You invite people to church. How many are? How many want to be fruitful? How many would like to be fruitful? Be wise. I say be wise. Proverbs 10, 31. Tell your neighbor, be wise. Tell your neighbor, be wise. Wise. Do you have a proverb? Verse 30. The righteous will never be removed, but the, the, but the wicked will not inhabit the earth. We are in a mission. We righteous people. And I want you to take 10 flyers right now and I'll be praying for them. I'll be praying for them. I've got two things that I want to do. Three things actually. I want to assure you. Of course it's you to help me to distribute them. Give everybody 10 flyers. Then I want to pray for them. I want to pray for those flyers. Every Sunday, make it your purpose. Make it your purpose to do the work of the kingdom. Every Sunday, come with people. Ten. It's easy to get ten. Get the bunch, count ten for yourself. Why am I giving you ten? Because I don't want to give you a thousand to go and waste. They have cost said money. But if you feel like you are more aggressive... Please, you can add yourself more, but everybody, a minimum of 10 must be given by every Sunday you come. We will print and print and print until everybody hears the gospel of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Take 10. How many are willing to be used of God? How many are willing to be used of God? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not a burden to be used of God. It's a honorable thing to be used by Jesus. It's a honorable thing. Just the way we are today here. If every one of us goes to their circles of influence and tell people, I've never invited you to church, but please, I've brought you this flyer. I'm going to pray for it. I've never invited you to my church, but I bring you this flyer. Some of them, like the, the, the cab driver that brought me, he told me, I'm going back at 7 that to my certain religion, a very dead one, a very cultic one. 
some of them need to be raptured. That's why you have read Jude, verse number 23. When Gine kutoka kwa moto. They are just dying. They are just dying. They are just dying. They don't need to die when we are here. We exist for them. Somebody say amen. Proverbs 11.30 It says the fruit of the, huh? 11 that in back 11 that in a twin soul thank you the fruit of righteousness is a tree of life and he who wins souls is what and then he has told us in Reve in daniel that those wise they will shine like firmaments and like stars in heaven hallelujah we today are joining the mission of jesus from today you are a disciple i say from today you are a disciple you are going to win souls and you are going to follow them baptize them you are going to follow them until they become like you they hear your amen then when you go to heaven you'll be honored by god himself hallelujah I want to pray for my flyers. If you are sure you are going to use them like a kingdom person, just lift them up to God. Say, Father, today, I change and I repent from being a useless disciple to a fruitful branch. Say it again. To a fruitful branch. Lord, I will abide with you. And I join your mission to be a soul winner. I pray that you forgive me of the blood of the many people that I have not spoken to that are in my area of influence. Lord, from today, I take my place to win the world in these last days. I ask you to use me to empty hell and fill up heaven. I refuse to be a coward. I receive the Holy Ghost and the power to win souls. I will obey you and serve you. Lift up those flyers. Keep them up. Keep them up. Father, I sanctify these flyers. Today, I release an anointing upon them. Every Sunday, Lord God Almighty, we shall touch the world. We know we are in that last hour. When you are just about to come, an angel, Archangel Michael is standing in the cloud with the voice of a trumpet. Before people are judged to go to everlasting life and to hell, Lord, we want to bring the souls that are supposed to be harvested to the kingdom. I breathe, Lord, life to these flyers. I breathe life to these flyers. They will not be dead papers, but they will touch people and they will draw people to God. As we take them out there, touch the world and save it. And when we come home, that we shall hear you call us good and faithful servants in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Those are alive. Those papers are alive. Somebody say, these are kingdom instruments. Amen. I want to do a second thing. Because we are a mission church. There is what we call a mission seed. We give it three times in the year. The first day we'll be giving it will be on the 28th when we are going to Mombasa. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, yes, yes. Why is it a mission seed? Because we are not just reaching out Kenya. We are reaching out the world. Kuna wazungu utakutana nao na waindi na waarabu wakwambia asante. You brought me to the kingdom. Then you ask them like those who are asking Jesus, when did I do all this? And Jesus will tell you, when you gave a mission seed, 
you saved the world. Our papa has been called to the world. I got one amen. It was so nice. Everybody shout amen. 